This is InvestorIdeas.com, and we're talking today with Steve Hawkins, President and Co-CEO of Horizons ETFs, and he's here to discuss the world's first marijuana ETF, Horizons Medical Marijuana Life Sciences ETF, trading on the TSX HMMJ. Steve, the Horizons Medical Marijuana Life Sciences ETF just started trading on April 5th on the TSX. Can you talk about when you started the actual planning of the ETF and how long it took to put everything in place to get listed? Yeah, hi, Don. Um, We started uh, planning this three to four months ago. Um, The medical marijuana investment uh, uh, opportunities really started to evolve about a a year ago. And working with the regulators, um, you know, we have a pretty – uh, standard process, but this is a controversial sort of subject matter from an ETF being, you know, sort of the world's first. And um, so we did have to undergo a fair bit of regulatory scrutiny, but uh, all in all, we were very happy with the process and we were very happy to be able to launch the, the product as quickly as April 5th um, and bring the world's first uh, marijuana ETF to market. Yeah, it's very exciting. Can you talk about the criteria for some of the companies that you've included and also maybe some of the top performers that you're seeing? Uh, sure. So uh, right now the, the index has uh, 16 names in it. We, we own 14 names in the portfolio itself. Um, uh, Ten of those are uh, Canadian listed companies. Four of them are U.S. listed companies. Uh, most of the companies on the Canadian side are actually medical marijuana producers and distributors, so those that have the licensed producers in Canada for medical marijuana. The names that we have in the U.S. are more, I would say, marijuana supportive or biopharmaceuticals from that perspective. Every company that we have in the portfolio, though, has uh, business operations that are uh, very mer- medical marijuana or marijuana-related or thc it's sort of like a cannabinoid um, related from that perspective. So everything that has something related to the marijuana industry or marijuana-like uh, types of securities. So some of the biopharmaceuticals, as an example, are um, uh, creating synthetic THC from that perspective. And we have you know, Scott's miracle Grow, which is in the portfolio, which has uh, dedicated a significant business line and is investing heavily into creating – hydroponics and soils and fertilizers very specific to the marijuana industry itself. So that's how the product is working. And you just touched on this a a little bit, but with the ETF focusing on North American companies, are you favoring the Canadian listed stocks versus U.S. just because we've got the promise of legalization on a federal level in July 2018? Uh, That's that's one of the reasons. I mean, for us to launch the product and, and get through the whole all the regulatory hurdles that we had to uh, to become listed in Canada um, we had to uh, undertake not to invest in any companies that would be considered to be operating illegally and all of the US medical marijuana companies um, or even recreational use marijuana companies that are out there or supporting that industry are technically operating in an illegal format right now because it is not federally there's no federal approval for marijuana because it's still a Schedule One narcotic in the U.S. So when you get down to the actual medical where marijuana producers and distributors here in Canada, that's the only place to access that market per se. So we're only investing in Canadian-listed marijuana producers, um, and, and all the U.S. companies that are in there are really supportive to the marijuana industry. And can you talk about the actual dollars and the market opportunity here in Canada for for the producers that have their licenses right now? And outside of the producers, what are some of your favorite ancillary markets and products that, that, that uh, complement that? Well, we've seen the medical marijuana industry um, uh, more than, I guess, the number of users in Canada over the past year has gone up by almost 500%. Um, so we see very, very strong growth prospects for med- just the medical marijuana usage. So not alone including the recreational usage uh, prospects. Um, you know, we don't really have anything from a, a Canadian perspective to rely on there, but we've seen the huge growth in like, states like Colorado and California where um, they've uh, approved it at the state level. And, and the operators there, uh, both from a production and distribution perspective, have grown substantially uh, in those jurisdictions. And like the, the dollar values of sales we're seeing in the billions now uh, in U.S. So in Canada, the numbers are still, uh, I'll say, relatively.
relatively small to the U.S., uh, but the growth prospects are significant. And here's a question investors might want to know. As an ETF, are you allowed to participate in, in IPOs, or do you have to wait for the companies actually to be publicly traded in, in the same market opportunities that they have? Yeah, so our fund is a, is a physical index replication um, ETF, so we try and match the index as um, companies get added to the index, then they'll be added to our portfolio, and it's just like managing sort of the S&P TSX 60 ETF. You know, if a name changes in the S&P TSX 60 or composite, then we would change the underlying portfolio along with that index change. So we really can't be participating in IPOs per se because an IPO doesn't meet the um, – uh, liquidity and size requirements generally required to be included in the index. We need to have essentially 30 full days of trading so we can see what the average trading volumes and things like that are so that we know the underlying security meets the liquidity requirements to join the index and thus for our ETF. And, and again, on that note, how often are the companies in the ETF scrutinized and like looked at for meeting your criteria? So the index is rebalanced on a quarterly basis, though we are con constantly reviewing the underlying uh, companies themselves. And there's more and more companies that are sort of coming into the space on online all the time. We've seen two IPOs in Canada already since we launched the index back in March um, with Selective. So, and both of those companies are very likely going to meet the index requirement for June. So we would see those companies get added to our portfolio in June. But we already have we know that there's five to six new companies, both Canadian and U.S., that meet the criteria now that we'll be looking to add on a going forward basis. But we're in constant um, uh, review of the underlying companies themselves because we have to understand the business operations. We have to understand their, um, their business opportunity in the marijuana marketplace. Though we're not doing really – I'll say qualitative analysis of the companies. It's just more a, a making sure that they meet the requirements of the index itself and, and thus the, the strategy of, of the ETF. And would you be able to name those two IPOs or do you have to wait until they're formally added into the ETF? Uh, I, I can't uh, name any. Okay. Okay, perfect. And just in closing for investors that are following the space, and obviously you have your own way of doing due diligence, what advice would you give them as far as playing and long-term, short-term and investing in the sector? Well, this is a, you know, we promote ETFs and we promote, you know, broader, more diversified exposure for investors. Uh, investing in the individual names, especially in a, in a sector that um, is very early stages like this one. You're taking a lot of risks by investing in individual companies. By investing into an ETF that invests in the sector and gives you a much broader, uh, diverse exposure really can reduce the overall risk level of, of the investor. So if this is a, an asset class or a sector that you want access to, then using an ETF to invest in it or get access to it is by far uh, the better way to do things uh, from a risk-reward perspective. So this is an early stage, high growth prospect industry, but there's a lot of risk that comes along with investing in early stage high growth sectors. That's great. Thank you very much for your time today. And hopefully we can do a follow-up in the next quarter and see where the ETF is at. And maybe uh, you'll have added in some new companies and we talk, can talk about them at that point. Absolutely. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. All investment involves risk, and this podcast is not meant to be an endorsement to buy or sell securities or products. To hear more of our podcasts, you can go to www.investorideas.com forward slash audio. And you can also hear our podcasts on iTunes, Google Play Music, TuneIn, and Stitcher.